Hey guys, Trek loaned me their E-Caliber electric cross-country mountain bike recently and it's got the Fatsua Evasion mid-drive. Thought it'd be a good opportunity to go into this thing, talk about some of the accessories, show you some of the performance. I do have a full review of this bike, but what I've noticed is a number of companies are now using this for their bikes. So some of those companies include Look, Bulls, Kettler, Bergamot, KTM, Willier, Ridley, Batesia, Max, Trek, Canyon, Focus, Cube, LaPierre, and Centurion. And we'll probably see more in the future. So the drive system consists of three main parts. We've got that bottom bracket transmission. And what's kind of neat is if you pedal this, you can see that drive shaft interface spinning. And that is kind of the company's logo is that, that tri-arm piece there. Uh, they say it's designed to be resistance free beyond the top assisted speeds, which is generally 32 kilometers per hour, 20 miles per hour, unless you're in Europe, 25 kilometers per hour over there, 15.5 miles per hour. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, there's obviously a little bit of friction, I, I would think, just because you can see that thing spinning, but it's still a very lightweight option, and that's why you'll see it on a lot of road bikes or lightweight mountain bikes, as we see here. Uh, this weighs about 2.88 pounds, just that bottom bracket transmission. Then we come over here, you can see the drive pack the motor itself is right here. It's built into this drive pack. You can see the interface down at the bottom. This is the battery, which slides into the drive pack. So, you know, it takes up maybe two thirds of the space. And these each combined weigh about 7.5 pounds. Aluminum alloy tube is about 4.2 pounds. And the battery is about 3.2 pounds as I measured them. And if you want to ride the bike without any power support, you can get this hollow down tube, kind of a protector cover piece here. Looks like this. And it weighs about one pound. It's got this plastic cap at the top. You could put a sandwich in here, extra inner tubes, maybe some tools. And then it's gonna protect that, that open down tube area of the bike and that bottom bracket uh, transmission and the leads right here. You wanna keep that clean, you can see from the positioning that water and debris would go right up into that. And this is a carbon fiber frame. So it's nice to know that, you know, you've got this aluminum alloy, fairly tough uh, case as an option. Well, the battery pack is rated at 35 volts, seven amp hours. So that's 252 watt hours. That's about half the size of a standard electric bike battery today. You see stuff like the Bosch Power Pack 500 and now the 625. So again, this is sort of minimalist and I think the motor is designed to be efficient and sort of a power sipper. And given that these bikes are relatively light, you feel your own pedal strength a lot more. It feels a little bit closer to an acoustic experience than like these heavy duty and much heavier, uh, you know, full power electric bikes. This battery pack is interesting because you know, you can take it out of that, that motor interface or this drive pack, and that means that you could carry an extra one of these along if you wanted. They, they actually sell a backpack that has a little slot for this, as well as a frame pack that would hang from the top tube. Now that's only gonna work on diamond frames and probably gonna work best on frames that don't have a rear suspension element like we see here on the E-Caliber. The battery can be charged on or off the bike frame. And you can see the charger here. This is just a really cute, compact, 1.4 pound, two amp charger. It's got that Rosenberger Energy Bus interface. It's magnetic, so you just kind of line it up like this and kind of twist it until it clicks into place. And then you can see it's, it's, in, it's in good shape there, but if someone bumps it, it's not gonna drag the, the battery off the counter. It's not gonna break any plastic. So that's pretty nice, but it probably adds a little bit of expense. Um, and you'll notice I'm in the grass here. If you're in a shop or uh, a dusty, dirty area, you can start to get iron filings and other metal pieces just stuck to the end of this. You might wanna clean that off occasionally. I do like that the wall side unplugs and that probably allows this to work in a bunch of different geographies more easily. And it just makes it more compact. So you could take an extra battery, you could take your charger and then extend your range significantly. One thing I would love to see from the company is maybe an even smaller sort of bottle shaped battery that could fit into, um, you know, like a bottle cage. I've seen that with some of the other designs like Specialized has their Superlight SL and it has like a fully integrated non-removable down tube battery. 
which is a bit of a bummer because then you have to bring the bike near uh, a power socket to charge the bike. But then they have these very easily removable battery packs that are a little bit lower capacity than this, but just a lot easier to throw in your pack or mount directly to the bike and keep that weight low and center. So there are trade-offs. I think the biggest trade-off for me is that you have to take the drive pack off of the bike in order to charge it every time. And that requires the key in most cases to like unlock this drive pack. And you've got to, you know, pull on this lever here in this case and take this off the bike. There's just a lot more screwing around. You might have to lay the bike on its side and depending on where the, the key slot is to unlock the drive pack, it could just be a little bit finicky. So I've lined it up and I'm just sliding the battery pack in. Careful, because a couple times I've pinched my fingers a little bit while doing that. Uh, this is the 250X. It's the newest version of the Fatsua battery and it has a slightly different interface here. You can press the little button, get a power readout, four dots. So each one must represent a 25% increment. There we go, seven and a half pounds. There's the drive shaft interface. And then it appears to be kind of a heat sink, like a bladed design to dissipate some of the motor heat because that is where the motor is located in the drive pack. You can see now that I'm pushing down, this tab comes up. And this is just Trex design. Each company might have a slightly different interface. So some of my favorite updates with this new Black Pepper software release include increased power from that motor. So you're getting 300 to 450 watts of output, where in the past they said, you know, 250 to 350, so it seems like they turned the power up. You're still getting 55 Newton meters of torque, which is quite good, especially for such a lightweight drive system. It's very capable for climbing. I took this up a couple of little steep sections at low speed, and the power was right there. In fact, I could do a couple wheelies, which felt really nice. Perhaps my favorite update with this new software release is that you get higher cadence support. So instead of just 85 RPM, you can imagine you're spinning at 85 revolutions per minute. Now they support up to 125, which is great. There are a lot of other systems out there that say they support up to 120. And for me, that's like, that's a really healthy level. It means if you downshift because you want to give yourself an increased mechanical advantage, well, you have to spin faster to keep that same speed. But if the motor can't spin faster to support you, you, you really feel like, oh boy, I lost my support. So that, that was a, a big and important update and it really makes this system a lot more competitive, in my opinion. At the time of this recording, Fatsua has three display panels or remote pads. We're looking at my favorite one of the three. This is the BX. It has a power button right there in the middle and then up and down. It's touch sensitive, which is interesting. And they do have a mode where you have to continue to press that center button to cycle through the three levels of assist because rain and water seems to activate the up and down arrows or these up and down pads. And you'll notice we have a dropper post lever here too. So if you're reaching over and you accidentally bump that on your way to the dropper, you might lower your assist uh, and, and not really need to do that. Uh, so I've looked at that one for this review. In the past, I've also seen the remote FX, which was a remote that sat like inside the frame and they would, you know, it's a lot more reaching. Up here, you might be shifting and braking and having to take your hand off to interact with a display isn't really ideal. But then again, we've got a lot of bikes that have um, drop bars. And so your hands might be in multiple positions in the drops, in the hoods or in the flats. And so I can see why in that case, maybe they'd have this other remote FX display panel. Uh, maybe it's a little bit cheaper and you don't have to have the cable running, might save some weight. Both of these displays would allow you to turn the bike on and off and change assist level. They have a third display that's called the Remote B. And one thing I like about it is instead of just having five dots that show your charge level, did you see them go up? So we're not fully charged here. We got three out of five. Instead of showing up to five, it would show up to 10 dots. And that was cool. It gave you a lot more precise feedback about how full your battery was. So you could plan your trips better. Still allowed you to go up or down in terms of assist and it could be mounted to the handlebar but for some reason it wouldn't turn the bike on so you you'd have to like turn the bike on at the battery pack which coming back to charging and everything it's like you'd have to unlock the battery to to do some of this and to me that was just really unfortunate and a real inconvenience the Fatsua system also works with Bluetooth low energy, and that could work with Garmin devices and some heart rate monitors and other cycle computers, as well as an app, 
like a smartphone app on your mobile device. I did download the Fatsua app, tried to work it with this Trek eCaliber, but it didn't work. I think Trek has their own version that's gonna come out. One thing I saw on the Fatsua official app is that they gave you some of the basic feedback about like ride speed and max speed and stuff like that, maybe even some mapping, but you had to pay extra to get some of these additional features. And to me, that was interesting. It was like a subscription model. I haven't really seen that from any other um, bike companies. Usually you bought the bike and you just get the information. So uh, it's an interesting tact. I feel like Fatsu is doing something unique here with a lightweight system that's fairly modular. It means that you could get a couple of these different bikes and maybe share one of those empty packs for the down tube or share batteries. Maybe you could update the display or upgrade it with, your, with the help of your local shop. Most of these bikes are sold through local shops versus like an online direct thing. So I feel like it's gonna be around for a while and I, I see some areas where it could definitely be improved, like namely being able to charge right on the bike. Um, and ideally the locking core would be on the right hand side of the bike, the drivetrain side versus the non-drivetrain side. I don't know if that's Fazua's decision or in this case Trek, but you can see the lock over here. It just, it's a lot harder to, to access. And this is the sensitive side of the bike. So if you're ever laying your bike down, you wanna lay it on the non-drivetrain side. Um, I do wanna call out in this case that Trek has done a really good job with the rear wheel speed sensor. Uh, there's like a little magnet there on the Ice Tech rotor uh, centerpiece that passes the sensor versus using a spoke magnet. And then I think we've got cadence and torque sensing here. It does not have shift detection. It's not quite as advanced as maybe Bosch, but it's on par with uh, Broza and Yamaha and Shimano. So all in all, I think it's a cool system. Definitely excited about the software update. Black Pepper made a big difference. It was a lot more satisfying to ride. It's a fairly quiet um, and yet still very powerful uh, drive system. Now I'm gonna ride over some rocks and stuff. So I hope that helps you guys out. I'll see you back at the site for more reviews and the forums where I'm gonna post this video and you can chime in with, with your thoughts. And ideally, if you have an, an older Fatsua powered e-bike, like some of the Bulls ones I've reviewed in the past, maybe you can upgrade the software and get access to this higher RPM support and higher output. 